happy. And now I'd like to welcome Bill Manzi. He's the administrative director of telehealth strategy, and he's from Memorial Healthcare System today, talking with us about the bridge that is being built between technology and medicine. He'll discuss ways that technology is becoming a part of everyday medicine, the future of doctor's appointments, and the kind of healthcare experience people can expect when using something like telehealth. Hi, Bill. How are you? Welcome to the program. First, tell us about telehealth. So telehealth is really nothing more than delivering healthcare using technology, right? And that sounds so simple, but during the interview, I'm going to blow your mind of how much we can really do with telehealth. It's changing the whole dynamic of the patient going into the physician office, waiting for hours to receive treatment, and converting that into a whole new convenience factor in healthcare. I'm a parent. I have two kids. I go to the doctor, I don't even know how many times, over an ear infection just to get a prescription for amoxicillin. Or, you know what, it's just a cold. You're sure. going to be okay. Mm -hmm. But my fear is, is that sometimes technology may get to the point where it cannot diagnose what's in front of it. So where is the line? Where do you need to go to the hospital? When is that time? Sure. And when is the time where using technology like this will be effective and time-saving for you? Sure. So the beauty of this is that we're using healthcare professionals, right? We're, we're not using anyone, just anyone off the street to deliver the care. It's up to the medical professional to say, hey, you know, this is not something that's appropriate, and I'll use that word, appropriate. It's not appropriate for telehealth. So, number one, if it's an emergency, we will stay with you until 911 comes. If it's something that requires an, a higher level of care, then they would refer you to either an ER or to your primary care physician. What we don't want to do is to take away the whole factor of you having a primary care physician. You do have a medical home. What constitutes an emergency? The line for an emergency, it means something different to you and I, who right. are parents, right, and then to a physician. So we may say, okay, w there's bleeding, and, and but it's a minor cut. Let's see a, f a doctor through telehealth. However, the doctor on the other side will say, well, I really can't do much for you. You do have a wound, and it's probably best that you go see a physician in person. Um, but then there are instances where it, it's an emergency slash non-emergency, and, and the provider makes that determination and he, he or she will say okay you know I think it's best that you go to the ER now or uh, I think it's best that you go see your primary care physician uh, and even though you wouldn't see your primary care physician for an emergency you would see them for conditions that you cannot uh, be treated for during, through telehealth. Can they send an ambulance? Would a doctor go I'm sending somebody right now what's happening is not good this is mm -hmm. on the way and let me help you through the situation until they arrive. So the challenge with that is the provider doesn't really know exactly where the patient is. So um, they will stay on the line uh, to make sure that you are receiving the care. They will recommend that you call 911 or they would recommend that you go to an urgent care center or, or an ER. I hope in the future they're able to send something because I envision mm -hmm. like my child who is going to be well more versed in the Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, videoing sure. situation, conference calling than the cell phone. Telehealth, it, it's changing. It changed from the beginning of this week till the end of this week. It changed from three years ago till now. It, it continues to thrive in our market and just grow. And, and something like that where you're able to determine where a patient is and you can click on a button on your screen that says send 911, that's coming. It, it's not available today, but that's coming a, along with a whole slew of new options. What's the biggest change you've seen since starting this? The biggest change I've seen, two biggest changes, which is the education of the patient, patient population we're trying to serve. Patients are now more educated, more educated than, uh, you know, they were three years ago. Oh, yeah. My kids, and I also have two kids, my kids, if it isn't on their phone or on their computer, they start asking questions. Mm -hmm. uh, forget about a CD, forget about a VCR. If uh, they can't do it on their phone, then they probably won't do it. Mm -hmm. um, so the education of our community that we serve, greatly different than it was three, four years ago. Physicians 
uh, consistently treat their patients on protocols, on policies, on procedures, and introducing telehealth in- interrupts all that. Right. Uh, so educating the physicians as well and um, their willingness to try something new, that has completely changed. There are a lot of new physicians on the market that want to do nothing but telehealth. Some of the old school physicians are now incorporating it into their everyday lives. That is crazy. Is this going to be a kind of like a specific practice? You know, you've got your OBGYNs, you've got your general practitioners, your surgeons. Will there be people simply trained to uh, diagnose through technology? Sure. That's of course. insane. Yes, definitely. So we're headed. So uh, how do we see future doctor's appointments using this kind of technology? So where we are today is we're incorporating telehealth into the uh, everyday practice uh, of a physician's office. So you have options. You can either come in person, which may be your best option, or you can come when appropriate and use a telehealth visit. So to give you a good example, um, Parents who are at work and children are at school, they have to take their kids out of school to go see a physician. And more likely than not, they're going to be in that office for three hours mm-hmm. or, or the entire time from driving, taking them out, going to the office and then going back. A three hour time span. If you can have a telehealth visit again, when I, I'll say when appropriate, um, when, if you have a telehealth visit, that telehealth visit on average lasts about seven to ten minutes. So if you can schedule that and the physician agrees to it and you're able to do it, you're saving yourself and your child so much more uh, time. How is this, uh, can we even talk about how this is billed differently? Are there co-pays to use telehealth? Are they different than going into the doctor's office or is it the same thing through your insurance? So unfortunately in the state of Florida, there is no reimbursement for telehealth. There's no mandate for telehealth reimbursement by managed care companies. Now, with that being said, I have been selected to participate in the Governor's Telehealth Advisory Council, Ooh. which um, I, and I, I believe there's 15 of us. Um, this group is going to do the research behind what should be in a telehealth bill for the state of Florida. They're going to provide recommendations. They're going to do their due diligence to provide those recommendations. So hopefully uh, within the next few years, we will have a, a, a something in place that allows for reimbursement. So until that happens, it's a cash pay system. Okay. And what we do at uh, Memorial Healthcare System is we want to keep the telehealth visits either at the cost of your co-payment or below, or, or else it doesn't make any sense, right? right? Right, or else you might as well go in. And then if you sure. go on for whatever reason and the doc says, hey, this is a situation where you need to go in, you might end up doubling down on sure. on paying. So sure. that's cool that you guys are looking to sure. fix that because this is a really neat service. Again, I know I'm bringing my kids up, but I know when it's an ear infection. Mm-hmm. All right, I don't want to drive across town and have somebody tell me that I need to go to Publix to get my free amoxicillin. Like mm-hmm. I just would like to call somebody and say, it's an ear infection. Sure. Can you please just send sure. it in? Well, how cool would it be if your child was at school and uh, instead of the nurse calling you to say, hey, your child might have an ear infection, why don't you pick them up? How cool would it be for your child to see a provider from school and receive a prescription right from uh, your office and pick it up later on that day to start treatment immediately? That's crazy. That's a total time saver. Um, how does getting a prescription work then actually through this system? Did they call it in like it would be at a doctor's office? or yeah, Very similar. So we use an electronic electronic uh, prescribing systems, very similar to what we do at the hospital. So if there is a prescription that is needed, and not all visits require a prescription, but if a prescription is needed, it's electronically sent to the pharmacy of choice. Why do you feel that this is such an important tool? Or even why do you feel like it's going to become a very important tool? So telehealth is my life. Telehealth, I not only because I work in this field, but because I believe in it, it's going to become part of the future. It's part of the evolution of care. Um, when you see uh, lines in the ER, when you see lines in the urgent care center, a lot of those people are people who may not have a primary care physician, who may not know the difference between an emergency care visit versus just a traditional, I need to see primary care doctor visit. So providing this service to a community who 
quite frankly, is requesting it. Uh, we, we've had quite a few visits so far. You know, it, it's just like your Amazons. It's just like your iTunes. You want everything at your fingertips, at your convenience, and when you want it, how you want it, and where you want it, is, is what I would say. Well, and it seems like this can also branch off into a, okay, I believe that you're having a situation right now. I'm going to call your local hospital. I'm going to let them know you're on the way. And so they can be prepared for you when you walk in the door. When I'm in the ER, I almost feel like half the time the wait battle is them getting prepared to see me. Sure. If they already knew what I was in there for, you know, they could be established and things would run smoother for them mm-hmm. as well. So this sure. seems like a tool that's also going to cut down the lines in the ER even when that's necessary. Sure. For all those patients that are not required to be in the ER and if they can use this as an alternative, it, it will reduce the wait time for those patients who do need to be in the ER and see those, those physicians. I'm sure there are people who are, I mean, against is a strong word but not feeling this as the way medicine should go. What do you say to those old school doctors or Mm -hmm. older patients who fear this kind of advancement in medicine? So it it all comes down to education. Really, there is no downside to delivering telehealth, uh, using technology to deliver health care. There really is no downside to it. So what I do, and I, I do it on a daily basis, is I educate. I educate the consumers. I educate our patients. I educate our physicians. Um, without someone seeing the value, it, it's not going to be a, a, a product that gets pushed along. Um, so education is key here. So what's your most common asked question then? Uh, can this condition be seen over telehealth? Uh, and then I would just answer it. Yeah, and it can be anything. It could be someone with chest pain. It can be someone with a rash, with pink eye. Um, it can be many things. For me, my worry would be, I mean, my son has been fighting this cough for real. Like, he's sure. going to the pediatrician today because we need to find out if it's bacterial or if it's <laughs> viral, right? But that's not something that can be done over the phone. So that leads to this question, how accurate are the diagnosis that you're getting through the phone? So, the physicians that we, our physicians and the physicians that we partner with, they all work off of protocols and evidence-based medicine. Right. So if your son um, uses Memorial Doc now, um, he, you can uh, give the physician information that will help them to determine whether or not it's a simple cold, it's a simple cough, you know, there's no respiratory distress here. So let's go ahead and prescribe X, X, and X, X, Y, and Z. Um, However, going back to what I mentioned earlier, if it was something that they said, well, you know, we really need to listen to the lungs, we really need to do additional testing, you should go see your primary care physician or let's go, if you don't have one, go ahead and go to an urgent care center. Here's a list of, and they give you a phone number and you can pick your own. That is absolutely insane. You seem very passionate about this. Mm-hmm. How did you get involved in this? It, it all started probably about four or five years ago when I was playing with a telehealth robot at one of our hospitals, yes. So we were using a robot to bridge the gap between our facilities. Um, as you may or may not know, Memorial Healthcare System has six hospitals. So we have specialists in one hospital that may not necessarily be in another. Right. So we're using the technology to help bridge that gap between the two. And, and ever since then, I was hooked. That's crazy. What? Um, so, all right, we've talked about the benefits to this. We've talked about how technology is merging with medicine. How else do you see technology making its way into the field of medicine? So... Medicine is probably one of the last areas to be affected by the change in technology. That's a crazily true statement. Yes, yes. So we're a little bit behind the eight ball when it comes to, and we meaning the whole medical oh, field, yeah. um, when it comes to changing technology. There's technology that's changing in the ORs. There's technology changing in the bed at the bedsides. Um, here at Memorial, we're also changing how, using technology to change how patients come into the hospital. We have an Uber system now that we're piloting with one of our hospitals where we're, we have partnered with Uber to get the patient to their to the, their appointments. And, and although it's not technology, it, how we are getting them there is using technology. Right. So That is crazy. Right. That's yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. Where can people get more information on this? If, if you want to look into this further and look into Memorial Healthcare and what they're doing, where is the place we can go for more information? 
to our website. Uh, we would, I would suggest that they go to mhs.net and we have uh, all the information you need with any pilots, with any new programs, uh, anything in regards to Memorial Healthcare System. If you're interested in Memorial Doc Now, you simply just have to go to memorialdocnow.com and you can register and have your first telehealth visit. Is it like an app you download? It's an app that you download for your Android or iPhone as well as uh, it being used on your PC. So you can go to the App Store and search Memorial Doc Now. But you do need a webcam if you're using... You do need a webcam, yes. Right. Oh. Yes, because it's definitely not just a video call. It's a video conference between the patient and the provider. Great. Yeah, what can somebody expect when they call in? It's very much like a normal doctor's appointment. It's, it's exactly like a normal doctor's appointment. At first, it's a little awkward because you may not have used a system like this before. So right. once you get past that, you're getting the same care that you would in, patient, in person. So the physicians are going to ask you the same questions. You're going to answer the same way. It's just this time you're you're using your phone or a tablet or your PC to connect to them. That's insane. I like to wrap up conversations with one question. What do you think the three most important things are people should take away from what you've taught us about this morning? I, I think... Um, patients and the community should really educate themselves on what telehealth is and to understand the value. Um, once they understand the value, I have no doubt in my mind that this will be a service that is mainstream throughout all organizations. Um, I myself uh, am a parent of two and, and I use it quite often to, uh, to see the pediatricians and I use it for myself. So um, just education is key. Second, um, Technology is changing, so we may say that we're seeing a physician in person, uh, um, I'm sorry, using technology rather than in person, and that takes away from the personal factor. But indeed, you're getting more attention from a provider that's on telehealth because they have to have eye contact with you the entire time. They have to listen to you the entire time, and they're not looking down and charting while they're t while they're talking with you. Well, that's a crazy point. Yes, yes, definitely. And, and lastly, I would just say, you know, as uh, technology evolves, so is how we're going to deliver healthcare. The whole paradigm of healthcare delivery is going to change, and I think patients and providers alike just need to be open to that idea. And again, go back to point number one: see the value behind it, because it really is here, and it's not going anywhere. And it's going to be something that's just going to expand into areas we never thought possible. Again, where can we get more information on that? For the application, I would say look at memorialdocnow.com. And for more information on Memorial Healthcare System, I would say go to mhs.net. Thank you so much, Bill, for coming on and sharing all of this information with us about how technology and medicine are finally coming together. Thanks again for coming on. I appreciate you taking your time out of your day. Thank you for having me. It was fun.